four-way stop. I don't know how well that would work. Uh, we could limit turns, or we could let it be a free-for-all. And you may laugh, but I'm, I'm leaning towards the free-for-all. Right. This was an example in Britain. It's pretty famous. This town is a, a dying town in the Midlands of Britain. It's called Poynton, P-O-Y-N-T-O-N. And it has a tremendous amount of traffic per day. It goes through. These are two highways that intersect in their downtown. That's the center of their downtown. And pedestrians were had feared for their lives to cross uh, hundreds of trucks per day. And it was signalized. People would wait at the intersection, gunning their engines to get through. And when they, they didn't look to left or right, and they would just go as soon as it turned green. They wanted to make a change because their town was dying. And they did that. That's a flat space with just different colors of pavers. And they were able to narrow the roads and increase the capacity to get there is now no delays at that intersection. And pedestrians could move, bicyclists could move throughout that. I don't say that's what we need to do here, but these thinking differently might be what we need to do to make those intersections work better. There's a, a video, and I'll give you the, the link to it. I think it's one of the best in an engineer. You might think it's weird, but it's one of the best videos I've ever watched. A before and after of an intersection that really was transformative. So, we could sign it to death, put signals up, stop signs, have police sitting there to ensure that everyone's doing the right thing. And that's what's considered a low risk, high congestion intersection. Low risk meaning that you just wait for the, your turn, you just wait for the light to turn green and you go. Or you go to a high risk, low congestion intersection, and it truly is a free fall. You can see pedestrians just walking through the center, and surprisingly, the accident level goes down tremendously. People, instead of sitting back and driving like this, they're driving like this, looking to make sure they're not here. <laughs> That's really what the, that kind of intersection we're looking at is a shared zone. And what's good about it is that it's multi-use. You can close the intersection down and use it for a, an event much easier than you can a signal light intersection that's very traditional curves, traffic signals, a lot of signs. Um, have an email address just for this. If you have any input, please give it to me. That video is point and regenerated. That's what it's called. That's the YouTube um, address, but if you just search for point and regenerated, it's much easier. Then you might not think I'm crazy if you're watching this. So, any questions on downtown? Just a comment, I think, more than anything else. Uh, I, I think uh, the free for all idea is not a good idea. You know, just on, just off the top of my head. But uh, right now it's a free for all, you know, with bikes and cyclists and pedestrians. So, we hope that any kind of engineering applied to this would help solve the problem, maybe not enhance the problem that way. So, I'm kind of concerned about that. That's a tough corner. There's no, no getting around that. I think by default, a lot of cyclists uh, and subdestrants go the wrong way down the uh, church. You know, the whole, and then that's just an accident waiting to happen. Accidents happen all the time that way. And I think if we think our, our streets back from the semis, mostly the byway doing that, the big truck, uh, I'm just afraid that we're introducing congestion back into an area that we're trying to get rid of with some of this. And again, you ask for opinions, uh, most people give you opinions know, because. All you do is what you hear. I'm just more concerned about um, small kids on bikes, uh, because that was one of the big pushes when I really stepped up for the byway. I know we pushed the byway because well, I wanted uh, semis out of our downtown. I like the kids coming downtown and having a safe route. You know, our city needs to be rediscovered because of the byways. I mean, the signage is great, people going down there. We just haven't solved the problem of how to get people safely to there. And 
you're on the right track on some of that for sure. But you are stuck with some physical limitations there, and that's that, that's a big challenge. Right. You know, we'd like to sure help you on that for sure. One of the things I am a believer in is that trying something with cheaply with paint first and see if it works. Not put a, a large investment into an intersection. Because an intersection like that could be a million dollars just for the intersection. We were to put signals in, it's a easily seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar back up a little bit. We don't the city of San Point doesn't own a signal at all. They're all owned by the state of Idaho. If the city starts owning signals, this may sound like a whiny thing, but I really don't want to maintain signals. It's very expensive. Uh, you have to have specialized people, specialized instrumentation, just to, just to maintain a signal. And since we don't own any yet, I'd like to continue that. Not only. Yes, there will be city owned signals. Uh, okay, that's a good question. When will this happen? The mayor and I went in front of the Idaho Transportation Board about a month ago and asked that they fund the two-way traffic on Fifth Avenue. They, they were very receptive. The proposal is in front of the board for their funding next Wednesday. So we'll know by the end of next week whether ITD is committed to the Fifth Avenue two-way and they put the money Money have to do that. If it does happen, it would be a year from now. By, by about this time next year. Could, maybe I missed it, but the sidewalks are 16 feet wide? They will be. Right now, they're 12 to 14, 13, right in there. Is that, why add four more feet to sidewalk? Why not keep it in the road? Keep the roads a little wider, more diagonal. Yeah. Easier to I think you go back to what those three goals were. Bikeable, walkable, and two-way traffic. With two-way traffic, we can give the vehicles enough room, but also provide more space for amenities on street furniture, cafes, and walking down town. That's what we heard loud and clear from everyone during that, that five months of public involvement. They wanted more bikeable more pedestrian oriented downtown. Yeah, uh, I, I ride my bike downtown quite a bit and and I watch a lot of families. Uh, this is a response to how do you get to City Beach safely. Right now, kids and families are going the wrong way down the street. So I don't really think that's a very safe solution. The other thing is two-way traffic, like on Pine Street, I cross Pine Street dozens of times every week on my bike. And having two lanes side by side actually speeds up traffic. And it's a lot harder and less safe to cross at that intersection. I'd say the same is true for Cedar Street. And I think that by moving it to two-way traffic there on Church, for example, provides actually a legal access for pedestrians and bicyclists that's safer and when you talk about how do you get a family to downtown or a small child that's learning to ride their bike, you're actually creating a safe and legal conduit instead of having them ride on sidewalks, which is illegal, or riding the wrong way down the street. So it actually, you know, gives a uh, bona fide safe route to the city beach. Having just one in and out on the bridge street. Very narrow bridge, narrow first bridge street. Nothing's going to be perfect there, for sure. Nothing can be perfect unless we build another bridge across Sand Creek. I don't even know where that would go. Everybody. How many people do they talk to? 
At least at a thousand. Yes. Everything's not perfect, but it sure is going in the right direction. So with the additional parking that diagonal parking will allow, what are you guys discussing any sort of changes to limitations slash rules like two hour parking in certain areas? Are you gonna segregate? Are you gonna go to 30 minute? Are you gonna just let it be free for all all day? Is there any gonna be any change or is it gonna stay pretty much the way the streets are labeled at as, as they are now? That's a great question because I can say I don't know because I don't deal with parking. <laughs> <laughs> so who would be the person that you would refer me to? I Okay, Okay. Um, and on the bump outs, I, yes. um, are you, how likely, where are you guys out with the bump outs, or bump outs, where are you guys out with that, how, what do you see the vision for that being? I, I think we'll stay with them downtown and not outside of downtown. So downtown being the bid business improvement district? Pretty much, from Alder to Lake. Okay. Um, Sixth. Or boy or two. Are you going to allow them for retail, or is it going to be pretty much food related, or is it going to be any business? Is there going to be requirements for how many spaces you can have? So, like McDuff's, where they're at, there's already a bump out in there, so we don't necessarily have parking in front of our location. So, we can't necessarily take the one that's there is a uh, handicap. So, how would how is that going to be regulated? That's a good question. I don't that specific location with a handicap space. You know, I, that downtown streets get feedback. And also, I don't know if Aaron will care or not, but Aaron is one working on coming up with that proposal for the, the, bump the out. parklets. Mm -hmm. I guess we call them parklets. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Are you talking about bowl balance on the corners or the actual yeah, like park, the, the, the extending yeah. sidewalk extensions into the parking spaces? Yes, exactly. The, the lack. Um, yeah, so I, we we're just about to put on the agenda for the Planning Commission to talk about you know, some, of, uh, some of what the design constraints would, would might be for those and whether they'll want to recommend to us working with Public Works to, to come, up with, come up with something. And that meeting is going to be uh, next Tuesday uh, at uh, 5.30 p.m. in Council Chambers. And there's a lot of examples from cities uh, uh, across the across this country and in Canada, Montreal and Nelson, as uh, Cody pointed out. Um, and you know, one of the questions is, you know, in most cities they requ they require to remain as public space, and Nelson appears to do it a little differently. They actually give it as an accessory use to uh, a restaurant, and that that's one of the things that we'll we'll be discussing along with you know what kind of setbacks and uh, you know whether it can go whether it can be the width of it can be wider than the business or does it have to be you know as as wide as the business stormwater features ADA accessibility all those kinds of things uh, we'll touch on. So that's a public space and everything? That's not in San Francisco, yeah. Not and not you know, space. cities like San Francisco, they don't have a lot of uh, park area per capita. We're we're kind of blessed that way. It's also a curse because it's a it's a real uh, draw on taxpayer funds on the city budget. But um, we have our policy is uh, um, is it eight uh, acres per thousand people, I believe. Uh, we're we're currently exceeding that. We have about ten. So we're not lacking park space in, in the city of Sandpoint. So, you know, and I, I don't know that Nelson is either, is either. Maybe that's why they chose to kind of make it more of a, you know, for the actual businesses, uh, as opposed to it, you know, strictly remaining as public space. It's something that we'll have to talk with, you know, have to look at the law, and, and you know, it, it should be an interesting. Thing. More questions? Cody, will these slides be available on the city website at all just to get a closer view of some of those maps and drawings that are tougher to read on the screen? Which ones, Pete? Uh, the newer one outlining the lights on Cedar, or excuse me, on Fifth, <coughs> that weren't part of the streets plan, like that, that one. one and that one is on there. Is it? Okay. If, if you went there now, that is on the list. I, I think it's on the home page, something about downtown two-way. Great, thank you. That's it.